Not one, but two ways to build a $700 gaming PC here in early 2021. And even one of them is an ITX build, which I can't wait to show you. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. If you don't already know, the purpose of these videos is just to give you some in-stock recommendations on how to build a gaming PC, this time for $700, and I'm gonna show you two ways how to do it. It's quick and simple. Everything I talk about today is linked down in the description, along with today's video sponsor, ASRock. Big thanks to ASRock, and specifically their X570 PG Velocita motherboard for sponsoring today's video. Aside from its beautiful silver, black, and red aesthetic, the PG Velocita is packing killer Wi-Fi 6 a AX 1650 for those crazy fast Wi-Fi 6 speeds for better gameplay and streaming. It also has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and you can even combine them with killer double shot pro technology which uses both Wi-Fi and ethernet at the same time and can deliver a max throughput as high as 4.9 gigabit per second speeds which is crazy. This technology provides better speed and traffic intelligence and gives you maximum control of the performance of your internet connection. The PG Velocita is also of course supporting AMD's smart access memory for better or GPU memory performance, and this board can definitely be a great option for your next gaming PC. Links are down in the description. All right, so jumping straight into this first build, we'll call this the ATX Intel build. The CPU I chose is none other than the i5-10400F. At just $150, you guys know I've been recommending the heck out of this six core and 12 threaded monster, and you really just can't beat this on the new market right now. Although the 10400F does come with a stock cooler, I think it's worth getting something a little bit better, and if nothing else, just more aesthetically pleasing, and that's why I went with the cooler Master Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition. This one definitely looks really nice with its all black heatsink and RGB fan, but feel free to save some money here and just go with the stock cooler or with any other cooler that you like more. Next up is the motherboard, and I decided on the ASRock H570 Steel Legend, but only because there's literally no other cheaper models that are full-sized ATX. When writing this video, there was a B460 option for $110, but that went out of stock in just a few minutes, so I recommend going with whatever's the cheapest model that you can find for this one. Also, don't be afraid to check on Amazon. Amazon warehouse for a used deal as well. You can definitely save some more money by going with a micro ATX motherboard. I'm personally not a fan of how a micro ATX motherboard looks in a full size ATX case, which we're about to talk about in just a minute. But if that doesn't bother you, then definitely go with that and save some money. After that, we have the RAM. And I was surprised to see that the Crucial Ballistics 2x8 gigabyte kit clocked at 3000 megahertz is down to just $74. In today's market, this is as cheap as any kit of RAM with these specs will get. And this is a pretty higher end kit. So I definitely just go with this one. Moving right along, we get to the SSD, and here I definitely spent a little more money than you have to, but I decided on the Western Digital SN 750 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Our deals god, aka Dr. Zoomer, recommended this one to me, and speaking of him, make sure you click that Discord invite link down in the description if you want to save a ton of money on your next gaming PC build. Over in the ZTT Discord server, Dr. Zoomer has his own dedicated ZTT deals channel where he posts only the best PC hardware and peripheral deals throughout the day, and you can turn notifications on for just his channel if you want to, so you don't miss them. Getting back to this build though, we get to the power supply and instead of finding something that's in stock today, which you can do by the way for a few bucks more, but instead I'm going with an EVGA 450 BR that you can almost always find on EVGA B stock. These will restock every Tuesday night or sometimes Wednesday morning. And I've been buying a ton of them and just last week, these actually got down to just $31. And instead of being used, these actually came up new and like this is literally the only power supply I've been buying these days unless if I need more power. Next up we have the case and man this one I need to get some more screen time on. This is the Metallic Gear Neo Air which is an ATX size case, comes with two RGB fans and just looks so good for the price of $61. I absolutely love the contrasting black and white design. There's no rear fan which you can add if you want to though and yeah this is just a really great option. Next up we get to the dreaded GPU section and sorry I just don't have anything tangible for you guys today, the only thing I can possibly recommend is going with any GPU that you find between $170 to $200, and that'll bring you right up to that $700 mark. Honestly, the best bet is still probably EVGA B stock, as I've been able to snipe a few GTX 1650 Supers for $180, but even that method is getting tough to do today. Maybe try your luck at some local deals and get lucky, but once again, I'm sorry, I just don't have any better options for you right now. With that being said though, this is what the final parts us is looking like for the ATX Intel build, and if you do find a decent deal on the graphics, 
graphics card, this is actually a pretty solid looking price to performance monster. Next up, we have a little bit more of a crafty AMD ITX build. And if you're willing to wait a little bit longer for the parts coming from AliExpress, this is actually the build that I would personally recommend doing. Starting with the CPU, I picked out the Ryzen 5 2600, which you can find on AliExpress for as little as $122. It's important to note that when dealing with this website, just like eBay, you need to make sure that you're buying from someone that has a ton of five-star reviews and you should be safe. Also be prepared for that lengthy month-long shipping time. I've personally bought at least 10 CPUs from AliExpress at this point, and I've never had any issues. The 2600 will not come with the CPU cooler, however, if you buy from here. So for that, I would recommend just buying a Wraith Stealth cooler on eBay for around 10 to $15. There's a lot of people that don't end up using the stock cooler that comes with their Ryzen CPUs if they bought it from Amazon or Newegg or whatever, and then they just list them on eBay brand new for like 10 or 15 bucks, and I've done that quite a few times as well. For the motherboard, we don't have too many budget ITX options available, but the most consistent cheap one that I found is the ASRock A520M ITX AC. This costs just over $100, doesn't support overclocking obviously, but it'll pair nicely with the rest of this budget ITX theme, because remember, $700 for an ITX build is definitely on the cheaper side of things. Moving on to the SSD, I used the exact same WD SN750 as the previous build, no need to get any deeper on that. Same thing goes for the power supply, and yes, I still do recommend the ATX sized EVGA 450BR. The reason we can get away with this is because our ITX case is the NZXT H210, which is not only ITX, but it's also big enough to support full size ATX power supplies, so we don't have to pay that SFX premium. ITX power supplies are so expensive right now, and that's the main reason why ITX builds just cost way more than an ATX or a micro ATX build. So if you can use an ITX case that supports ATX power supplies, this is definitely a good option. The H210 does come with two AER 120 millimeter fans at the back and the top, but you should probably add two more up at the front so you have better intake. Maybe just scrap together some random black fans that you have laying around if possible. To go along with this white and black color scheme of the case, you know I had to throw in some cable extensions in here, and I went with the Asia Horse all white cables, which is also another Dr. Deal's recommendation, and boy do I now love these cables. I've tried so many cable extensions at this point, and I've been reviewing all of them over on my Twitch live streams. I live stream all of my gaming PC builds over on twitch.tv slash zaxtechturf, by the way. And yeah, these Asia Horse models are honestly now my very top favorite. And then finally for the graphics card, same deal, man. Don't want to talk about it too long. Just find any graphics card between $170 to $200. Just make sure it fits inside the 210, which most graphics cards at that price point shouldn't have any issues. With that being said, here's what our final parts list for our AMD ITX build is looking like. Like I said earlier, this is personally the build that I would recommend choosing as it's far more aesthetically pleasing than the other one, but you definitely can't go wrong with either of these build guides today. If you're looking for another $700 build guide where I actually show it on camera and benchmark it, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.